Hello, 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 everybody. Um, so I apologize for the uh, disconnect uh, earlier there. Uh, there was uh, a bit of a... I, I'm trying to work with different Wi-Fi stuff, seeing what works best. Uh, for whatever reason, my Wi-Fi actually has like two Wi-Fi's connected to it. Um, so I tried to connect to the other one because currently my roommate is probably using uh, the one we normally use, and he's using that to stream, so I'm wondering if by using this one then the stream will be a bit better quality. We'll see. Um, yeah, we are dropping some frames, uh, but it doesn't seem to be more any more than usual. Uh, maybe. I don't know, we're fluctuating between like... Uh, Four megabytes and six megabytes so it can it can vary uh, which is not good um, I might actually switch back uh, but by doing so that would disconnect the stream um, yeah I don't think it's going to be in it well it could be better than what it was it just, it's just uh, that it's fluctuating a lot so I'm not sure I mean, we've been sitting at a cool, like, six for a bit, according to my little task manager here. Um... Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I should not have shown that. Uh... Whoops. Um, well, okay. Anyway, uh... <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have to cut that out later. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, with that out of the way, uh, okay, let's go over a bit of housekeeping, if I have any. I'm just saying that to kind of get into the habit of saying that. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the only thing would be, uh, uh, this week you may have noticed I took a day off, being Wednesday. Uh, I'm going to do the same next week. Uh, the reason why is because uh, we were going to do birthday stuff this week, but then that got changed and moved to next week. Um, so by the time that I realized it, we were already like in there, and uh, or rather, we were all already like planned around the idea of going and doing stuff so I couldn't change those plans back to normal really quickly so for now it's just um, next week we're going to be having those plans go into action uh, so yeah anyway um, long story short uh, I am going to not be streaming next week on Wednesday but otherwise streaming schedule should be normal uh, with that being said, let's get into today's stream. So, as the stream title says, I am going to be animating a jump today. Whoa, jump time. Um, and uh, one thing I've been thinking about a lot recently is uh, w uh, what, what, what kind of jump should I do and then what kind of jump sh should I make. And what I mean by this is there is a possibility for me to animate jumping straight forwards, backwards, and then side to side, uh, as well as jumping straight up. Uh, and I could do that. The problem is I might not need to, but I don't know. Um, the reason why I would need to is if I had some kind of walk on feature. Uh, and what I mean by lock on, you you might be familiar with it. It first started in Ocarina of Time, way back in the late '90s, and now every single third-person uh, uh, melee action game has it. Uh, at least most of them do. Uh, weirdly enough, uh, a modern example of something that doesn't is actually Ghost of Tsushima. Um, that game does not have a lock on feature, even though it feels like it should, but it doesn't. So, fun fact. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. So, 
So I'm trying to decide whether my game has a lock-on feature or not. And even if it does, uh, it does have the thing where if you lock onto somebody and then walk sideways, do you actually walk sideways? Or do you walk forwards to like the left or right? Um, same with going backwards. Like if I locked onto somebody and then, you know, pulled back on the stick, um, on the control stick, then would I turn around and start walking or running away? Or would I, uh, or would I, you know, go backwards and walking or whatever? And that's a very good question. The only difficulty with having the ability to have, like, to walk sideways and backwards and stuff, for one, I would have to animate those. I would have to animate, um, walking left individually. I could uh, get away with not animating going right, uh, if only because that would be a mirrored animation, um, which I could do because this is a humanoid character. Uh, and then I would just have to animate going backwards, which of course you can't just reverse the animation of going forwards because that looks very weird. Um, and then, of course, uh, from there, there are some things that I can put in place so that, you know, no matter what direction you're inputting, you are going in the direction you're inputting. So, say if we have a 360 degree, um, you know, control stick or whatever, and not just eight directions, say you go, you know, 235 or whatever that is, um, then I could program the game to be like, okay, so they're in between going right and going back so i am going to mix these two animations together just in the right way so it appears as if the animation is walking in that direction and then of course at that point it would just be a simple um like x and y output of you know which direction the control stick is pointing in and then having the character move that way um so i could do that it would just be a little more work and it might not be the most necessary, but I don't know. That's the other thing. I'm still trying to decide what kind of game this is. Obviously, this is a third person action game. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but the thing that I am still trying to figure out is, uh, uh, but like what mechanics and stuff are in this game and what it what is worth looking into and animating and programming and all that and what isn't um so for now at least i do want to animate jumping forwards and jumping up and from there i'm going to import the animations that i currently have into unity um and uh, I might actually do that on stream here today, depending on uh, the time. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, and then the rest of the animations, such as like jumping left, right, or back, or whatever, um, I'm probably going to leave those to when and if I need them. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, so, just to kind of give an idea of... Sorry about that, punched my microphone there. So to give an idea of what kind of animations I need, uh, let's let's make a list. Um, so, and th this is going to be extensive, I, I must warn you. So I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, turn off word wrap. Uh, let's make it 24, there we go. Okay. So, the animations that we're working with, obviously, we've got, uh, we've got three run cycles, um, or the three movement cycles, so to speak. Um, we've got walking, uh, jogging, and running. Um, and the, and I'm actually going to make the ones that I have done bold. Seriously? Wait, can I can I not just do control B? How, how do I make things bold? Okay, you know what? 
instead of bringing out WordPad or Notepad or whatever, we're just actually going to bring out good old Word. Because why not? Okay, uh, let's try this again. all under uh, movement and uh, I'll, I'll just call it movement and running. going to make this into a bit of a list. Um, moving that back just cuz, okay. Because uh, the cool thing about uh, Word, if I did this correctly, uh, there is a way to make it so that you can like minimize these. And I, I've done it before, I just need to remember how exactly. Ideally, there would be a way for me to minimize some of these, but for now it's fine. Okay, so um, and we're actually going to separate these out. So, for as far as movement goes, we've got running and we've also got jumping, jumping. Um, and with jumping, we have straight up. Forwards, and yeah, that's the one I wanted. Forwards, back, left, and right. I'm gonna put an asterisk here because ideally I would only have to animate going left, and then I would be able to animate going right um, uh, later, or like uh, just like put a mirror effect on it, and it'd be fine. Um, so that's jumping. Uh, there is some other movement options that I might need, um, but that's going into more combat related stuff. Um, so I'm going to put this under combat for now. Uh, and then I'll, I'll probably adjust this as we go along, but for now I'm going to leave, I'm going to just write down what I'm thinking. So as far as combat goes, um, let's see. Uh, we need some kind of uh, wall jump thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's do wall jump, wall run, and then wall run jump. And the wall run jump is when you are wall running and then you jump off of the wall from that. And that is different from wall jumping because wall jumping is just jumping to a wall and jumping off of the wall. Um, which, yeah, which is different because it has like, a, it, it has different momentum for one, um, but it probably would have a slightly different animation. Um, okay. From there, we need some kind of dash. So one thing that is in my mind of what this combat is going to be like, um, and uh, interestingly enough, a lot of times, uh, if I don't have something written down or structured, uh, a lot of times how I try to imagine or figure out how certain aspects of the game are going to work is by kind of just imagining a single moment that I want to have happen and then try to figure out stuff that I need in order to make that happen and in order to implement that. So uh, 
one one thing's for certain is that we need a targeted air dash. Um, and if you've seen uh, anything like, um, for instance, in Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, which is a game that came out, I believe, two years ago, um, made by Arc System Works, and obviously features a lot of Dragon Ball characters. Um, it is a 2D style fighting game, and it is very popular, uh, especially among uh, fighting game fans. Um, and uh, in that game, you are able to do kind of a targeted air dash kind of thing that I'm talking about, where you just hit a button and then your character just flies towards your opponent and hits them, um, which seems broken, but they balance it well enough because for one, you can block it still, um, but also it does leave them vulnerable uh, afterwards, um, at least for a short time. Uh, so, yeah, and then for my purposes, the targeted air dash is whenever you launch an opponent away in any direction, and then you can either hit a button or do something so that you automatically start dashing towards them. Um, or if you just target somebody that's far away, then you can hit a button or do something and you'll dash towards them. Um, and it's kind of a way to close the gap, so to speak, and get right back into the action. Um, and uh, it, 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 it just keeps the pacing of the battle uh, up and, you know, good and quick and fast and fun. Uh, let's see, what else do we need? Um, hmm. I would say there's a possibility that we want a double jump, but I don't think we exactly want a double jump. What I do need, though, um, as far as movement-based combat goes, is uh, jumping off of somebody. And there are two ways that you can do this. Um, so I'm going to just call this jump, jumping, jumping off of opponent and I'm going to make a subsection of this uh, and say that one way is um, uh, kind of off the head moving forwards uh, so off head move forwards I don't know what to call this um, and then another way is to kind of kick off of them um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just call this kickoff. Um, and we can actually label these two like, uh, but let's call the difference between them jump off and kick off. I put an extra F on that. And uh, the, the meaning of these two, jumping off is going uh, forwards and kickoff is going backwards. Man, I am great at typing today. Okay. Now that we've kind of got uh, that settled, um, yeah. Okay, is there any other movement option things that I might want? Uh, if there are, I can't think of them right now off the top of my head, so I'm going to call that good. And I don't think there's any other movement options that I want right now, exactly. Um, because yeah, we got the walk, the run, the, the jog, the, the run. Um, I'm also going to say, uh, well... Yeah, I'm gonna make a note here that says each needs, uh, I'm gonna call it directional difference. Okay, and that's just going to tell me that um, like for each of these, I need to, well, okay. I just realized that there are some that I don't need that for. 
So really, the only ones that I need is walk. Um, yeah. So for walk, I'm going to do the classic forwards, backwards, left, right, asterisk. Because uh, I, I think that jogging and running is fine. Um, but whenever you walk onto somebody, uh, if you strafe, you'll be walking most of the time. I don't think that you'll be strafe jogging. I haven't really seen something like that in most games, so yeah. Um, with that being said, that's like my new favorite saying now, isn't it? With that being said, um, yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's good in terms of movement, so let's move on to the fun part, uh, being actual combat. Uh, now the interesting thing about the combat um, it is kind of how I've st structured it, so to speak. Uh, so I'm going to first describe kind of how I'm picturing the button setup to go. Um, and uh, the, the, the buttons um, that, well, okay. So say we have a normal controller. I usually refer to Nintendo-based controllers because that's what I'm most used to, uh, where, where we have the A, B, X, and Y buttons, along with the L, R, ZL, and ZR buttons. Um, from there, you have some other special buttons, such as uh, plus, whoop, my, minus, and I hit a period there instead of a comma, uh, plus, minus, uh, and then what I'm going to call uh, L3 and R3. Uh, and that, that, those terminologies are for the buttons on the sticks themselves. Um, Nintendo doesn't really have a name for those exactly. Uh, th whenever they use them in any game, they just tell you to push in on the stick. Um, so I'm using PlayStation terminology and possibly also uh, Xbox terminology with this. Um, I actually don't know. what. Hold on. What does uh, PlayStation use for uh, its uh, triggers? Um, Xbox trigger name. I don't know. Uh, oh, right. They label them as bumper and trigger. So, okay, okay. So what they do is that they have uh, uh, LB for left bumper, LT for left trigger, and then LSB for left stick button. And then they have the R variations for the right side. That's very interesting, actually. That's 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 not bad. That's kind of clever. Um, but uh, I'm I'm more used to uh, L3 and R3 at this point, so I'm going to be using those. Um, so yeah, those are the series of buttons that you have. You can also use a combination of them, possibly to make certain inputs. But those are what we have. And then of course we have the two control sticks just on their own. Um, possibly for inputs. So, uh, with, with, with that, and I'm going to tab these over, what do these various buttons do? Well, if we're talking about a, uh, a Switch layout, or a Nintendo-based layout, where, uh, X is on the top, and B is on the bottom, uh, y is on the left and A is on the right. Um, from there, I, I can tell you immediately that the B button is going to be jump, or rather the B button is going to be uh, the movement-based button. And what this means is that any kind of thing that is based off of movement, and probably most often jumping, um, is going to be dedicated towards the B button. Now, the, the reason why I'm calling it movement, I will kind of explain as I explain more of the stuff I need. So, next up, the Y button is going to be what I'm calling 
a damaging punch. Now, a damaging punch can also be considered a light punch in other fighting games. The reason why I'm calling it a damaging punch, however, is because it doesn't necessarily have to be light, it just has to be meant for damage. And the reason for that is because the X button is the launching punch. Um, and a launching punch is a punch that is meant to, of course, launch the opponent. Um, so the idea with this, and the reason why I have it on two separate buttons, and not just have the launch be at the end of a combo, is because that I want this kind of freedom uh, for the player. Um, on one hand, like, it's... It's this interesting balance that you that every game developer has to go through where, uh, especially with single player games, you want to balance the ability to give the player a power fantasy with balancing them so they're not bored of being in god mode or whatever. Um, basically, you want to give them a challenge. You don't want them to just hit a single button and be able to just kill everything. Um, or to mash a single button and kill everything. That's no fun. Nobody wants to do that. Um, and, uh, and, and, okay, let me, let me put it this way. Some people want to do that. There are some people who enjoy just mashing buttons. I mean, Muso games exist for a reason, or uh, Warriors-style games. Um, and uh, I've never been able to get into those. I do not want to make a game that's like that. Uh, but I do appreciate them for what they are. Uh, with that being said, uh, the reason why I have the damaging punch separate from the launching punch is because I want the player to put on as much damage as they can slash want before letting them launch them away. I'm leaning more towards the power fantasy side of the spectrum here rather than a challenge side um, or a restrictive side. So like, let, let, let me put it like this. On one end, you have Dark Souls. On the other end, you have uh, Warriors games, where with Dark Souls, you are very restricted to what you can do and when you can do it. You do have a light uh, attack and a heavy attack, but both of those are very risky. They use up stamina, and you have to decide what you're going to be doing at every single point, because if you don't, you will die instantly. Uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we have warrior-style games, where you are up against hundreds and hundreds of enemies, and it is very easy for you to defeat them because you can just hit a single button over and over and over again, and you will eventually defeat all of them, as long as you, you know, move and target them and stuff. Um, so th that's kind of the two spectrums between, like, restrictive and power fantasy, so to speak. Um, and between those, if that was like 0 to 100, I'd say I'm probably wanting to lean towards like 70 or 80, um, which is just a bit, a smidge above uh, like normal single player action titles such as Devil May Cry and Bayonetta, um, where those games do have a ma like a major power fantasy. And they are very mash heavy, but they do have a lot of uh, decision making with them. I am kind of wanting to do something like that, but I'm going to kind of put my own spin on it. So it's very similar to those, um, but a lot more epic, a lot more action packed, and a lot more like um, a lot more anime, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the reason why I have those two. Um, from there, we have our last button the A button. And what am I going to do with this, you might ask? Well, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I'm probably going to change it at some point. But for now, what I'm calling this uh, is, uh, let, let's call it the special kick, or special move or something. Um, and what this does is Basically, you have your damaging punches and your launching punches or whatever, but what if you want to do something to the opponent that isn't one of those things? Uh, which, you know, 
is a rarer circumstance, admittedly, but it's possible. Um, and also, uh, by labeling this as a special kick, this is the only button that is dedicated towards your feet instead of your hands. Um, and in this way, uh, I kind of want to devote the feet to doing interesting things. So for instance, one of those things is to topple or like uh, ground opponents um, or like stun them, so to speak, uh, to kind of put them into a scenario where like I can, you know, follow up with more stuff. I can extend my combo. I can do more things. Like there's a lot of things that I can do with this. Um, it's kind of just a catch all other kind of thing um with the with the with feet um but yeah so there will be a few things that i'll do with that um but most of the time i'm just kicking the opponent to make sure i'm burying them into the ground uh so yeah uh so yeah and uh with that we now move on to kind of lrzlcr territory and for the most part, I haven't thought too much about this. I really haven't. Um, I will say, uh, just because it is standard practice, R3 is going to be lock on. Um, and if you don't know why that is, it's because every single game that has a lock on feature uses R3 as its lock on. Uh, there is little to no exception with that. Uh, the only The only exception actually is Zelda games, uh, funny enough. Um, and, I, and I might actually do that depending on uh, how things go and how certain buttons turn out or whatever, but uh, Zelda often uses its shield button, uh, or in this case, it's a ZL button um, to lock onto things. And uh, I mean, the reason why that is is because, you know, that's it's the one that started the lock-on thing way back in Ocarina of Time, and in that game, you know, you didn't have a stick to press in, so, yeah. They had to use something else, and they thought that using the button they used for shield, which in that, in, uh, in those days was just the Z button on the N64, uh, they used that for the lock-on. Um, so, yeah, uh, but I'll be using R3 probably. Uh, but now, now we move on to the bumpers and the triggers. Now, obviously, there does need to be a block button. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And for now, I can have that be uh, ZR. Um, which, you know, whatever. Um, I could also have a ZL uh, to be dash, as in the uh, targeted air dash from before. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that could be good. I, I could also switch those. Um, or I could make it so it's kind of an ambidextrous kind of thing, where, uh, L and ZL is blocking or dashing, um, and then R and ZR is blocking. Um, I could also have it where, uh, right, no, 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 okay, okay, so it's, um, it would be L and R is block, and then ZL and ZR is dash. There we go. Okay, that might actually be good. Um, and the reason why I have it like this is because, um, for instance, in one of my favorite games, Smash Brothers, um, in that game, you can use either the left side or the right side, and you can do all things that the triggers and bumpers do. And what I mean by that is, uh, in, in, in a similar way, L and R is grab, and then ZL and ZR is block or shield. Also, I just realized I don't have a grab in this game. Um, I don't think I really need one. I don't, I don't think I do. But I, I like just realized that, and, and it's a little weird. I don't think I want to have to animate that and program that. Not to mention, okay, l l let me put it like this. Let me put it like this. 
why do games have you grab, right? Why, why are there games that let you grab people? Most of the time, it's to either put a certain status effect, status effect on them, um, to throw them, or to damage them by pummeling them, you know? However, I can fulfill those purposes with other things. So for instance, even like the throwing mechanic, that's just the launching punch. Uh, and holding them in place so they don't go anywhere, I can just hit them. Um, now, keeping them in place without hurting them, that is a little more difficult, I'll admit. Uh, but eh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, if I really need one, I can put it in, but for now, I don't think I need one. Um, from there, I mean, plus and minus will be pause and menu or something. Uh, and then L3. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, L3 will be run. So a lot of times you'll be going around and you'll either be walking or jogging depending on how far on the control stick you're pressing. However, once you click in the left stick, then you'll start to run, uh, which will be different from dashing, of course. Oh, I also just realized I don't have a dodge. Oh. Um. Hmm. That could be uh, movement-based stuff. Uh, well, maybe. I could... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, here's, here's what I'm brainstorming right now. The B button has two separate functions. Uh, when you tap it, it will jump. As normal. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, reverse that. When you hold it, you jump. But when you tap it, uh, you dodge. Huh. How, how would that, how could that be bad? Um, the only way that I can think that would be bad is when people are trying to only jump a certain height and because of that they only tap the jump button but when they tap it it dodges yeah that could be that could be iffy yeah no i don't think that'll work um the other option the other option uh that i was thinking um because it kind of works, is that dash can uh, double function as dodge depending on the scenario. So uh, I'm just going to call this uh, evasive now. Ugh. Um, although that's probably not... Uh, I think the better way would be like quick movement or something, but I'll call it evasive for now. Uh, so, when you are... Okay, so if you are not locked on, or you are far away from target, then you will dash. However, if you are locked on, uh, and you are close to the opponent, um, then you will dodge. Uh, and uh, close or far enough away is going to kind of be a tricky thing. How I would interpret that is uh, if you are outside of the range of your opponent's attacks, then you will dash. But if you are within the range of your opponent's attacks, or if the opponent is attacking probably, then I will have you dodge. 
Um, yeah, and of course, dodge will make you invincible for a short time as you uh, evasively maneuver away. I I never liked uh, dodges that don't make you invincible. I think that's just weird. I mean, I get it. It's more realistic that way, for sure. Um, but it's just weird. Uh, because... I don't know, I'm, I'm really used to Dark Souls, admittedly, so whenever I dodge, I'm used to being able to dodge through things, um, and uh, having to time your dodge with an opponent's swing is often really nice, and using the dodge as just like getting out of the way, it kind of makes it a little more useless, because if you're just trying to get out of the way, why didn't you just run? Well, maybe you can't run. Well, that just sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you can't just run away, then then you've not made your game correctly, um, or something like that. You know, it's I mean, it's a it's a bit weird, but yeah. Um, okay, so with that being said, uh, yeah, I think I think that'll do for now. Uh, so. Let's go back to the animations then. <laughs> uh, and I'm actually going to... Eh, I'll leave this how it is, but... Um, well, no, no, no. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, I'm putting buttons in its own category because we're finally getting on to combat. I'm just gonna make a new list on the next page just for my sanity. So, with that being said, combat animations. Uh, we have a lot of things that we can do, so, you know, how does that combine? Well, um, we have all these uh, here, but okay, let, let's, let's start off with the basics. The idea with this game is that although you can just do the basic stuff, the the cool thing about it is that you have a kind of fluidity with your movements and animations and uh, your moves and whatnot, and that you can basically do anything out of anything. Um, and you can do anything at any time, and depending on when you do it, it'll result in maybe something different. Uh, so for instance, let's say you've hit the opponent a couple times, and then you launch them. Well, you also decide that you want to launch them up instead of away. You can do that by angling the control stick in a certain direction. Uh, or in this instance, uh, if you angle the control stick forwards or neutral, you will punch them forwards. But if you angle the control stick back, you will punch them upwards. From there, you can jump and uh, you can jump up and target them again. Uh, you can also dash towards them if you like. Uh, and then you can hit them in the air a couple of times. Obviously, you can't do that forever because both of you will start to fall. Um, and uh, prob probably after like a, a few hits of uh, the damaging punch. And then you finally, you will be able to launch them again. However, once again, you are able to decide where they go. If you do four, uh, but in this case, if you do forwards, you will launch them forwards. But if you do neutral or back, then you will slam them down back to the ground. From there, uh, you can then uh, once again follow up and keep on doing that. <laughs> uh, and my thinking is you can probably dash towards them again, uh, but then as you are dashing towards them, you hit the launching punch button or probably the damaging button. I'm not really sure. Um, one of them, probably, probably the launching punch button. Um, and uh, because they are on the ground, uh, th you will just slam them further into the ground. And if that doesn't kill them at that point, like you both will be set to neutral. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> that guy's gonna, uh, he, I, he better be dead at that point. Goodness. Um, yeah. So there's a lot, of, there, sorry, I got sidetracked. There's a lot of things that you can do. That's the point. Um, so let's list them out. And, uh, I'm going to be... Kind of shortening these, uh, at least some of them. So DP, for instance, is damaging punch, as I said. Um, uh, 
Uh, but first off, let's put it all under the guise of grounded. Um, or, yeah, grounded. So, grounded, damaging punch. Um, and actually, that's fine. Cause, uh, and this will be, of course, close up. And I'm just going to put times four here because I will probably want like a uh, like a do 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 kind of thing um, with a small pause in between, but not too long. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, well, okay. So, uh, question. So, like, uh, we have the launching punch, and depending on which direction you put, uh, it'll do a different direction. What happens if you do that with the damaging punch? Will it do anything? Uh, would it do anything? Um, I don't think so. I mean, like, what, what would happen? Like... If you pull back on it, then like instead of punching him, grab him or something. And... Well, well, that that would be cool, but mm, eh. yeah. no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think damaging punch will need to be directional or whatever. I think it's good the way it is. So it's just gonna be. It's gonna be the mashing button. Like you're. Like, all the other buttons, you're going to be timing, but if you want to do damage to the opponent and you want to do damage now, you're going to press this button. <laughs> um, so yeah, damaging punch times four, just be a do 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 or do 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 uh, kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, we've got uh, the launching punch, which we have variations for uh, launching four four words and upwards um there is also the idea of uh launching them to the side but uh, i don't know how i feel about that to be honest like i'm just thinking about like the momentum of things and that wouldn't really work like okay imagine throwing a huge falcon punch kind of thing at your opponent but then curving it at the very end to make them go to the left or right like that doesn't that just doesn't make sense to me you know um i could see you maybe doing like a hook shot kind of thing um where you dig underneath and then go at, at it from the side but that wouldn't really launch him necessarily that if anything it would just spin him which we could do um, but, uh, I don't want to, I don't think I want to go that far with it. Um, so yeah, forwards and upwards, I think will be fine. Um, there is one other option though. I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to look up something real quick because I want this to be a specific reference to something. Um. So, uh, small spoilers for the anime My Hero Academia, um, but uh, this, <laughs> uh, the United States of Smash, uh, which is a fantastic name, might I add, um, but as you can kind of see from this gif here, maybe, okay, it's a little small, um, but uh, what he does is that he slams him into the ground. Like, he punches him into the ground. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe we can do something like that. But I'm not sure exactly how that would work. 
Um, my guess... My guess would be that we would have some kind of super meter type of thing or something that would activate, and then if you were to activate a grounded launching punch once again, then he would just be launched straight into the ground um, and basically destroying him. Because we already have, well, Yeah, because I don't want it to be where, like, if you input forwards or neutral, or, like, like either of... I don't want the forwards launching punch to be replaced on either the neutral position of the stick or the forwards position of the stick. Um, because either way, that can lead to confusion on the player of, like, wait a minute, I wanted to do this, why didn't I do this? Well, you had to do this. I don't, I don't like, I don't like that kind of thing. It, it, in a lot of games... My thinking is, it, it, you give the player tools, right? You, you give them tools in order to do things. What they do with those tools should be theoretically limitless, in the sense that the player should never think, I want to do that, and then can't. Now, obviously, you know, there are obvious restrictions because, you know, there isn't a game out there, uh, there is no, no game that exists that allows you to do anything, no matter what those clickbaity ads, uh, with the sexy women say on it. Um, th there are always certain things that you cannot do in video games. However, uh... Okay, for instance, one of my favorite video games of all time, and probably is still my favorite video game of all time, is Le uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, get over it. Um, so, uh, in that game, th that game is one of the best examples of if you think you can do it, you probably can. In the sense that, let's say, um, oh, uh, one of the early examples is, like, you see, uh, Let's say you see a, you have a boulder in front of you, and you have a uh, enemy camp that's a little long ways away. Um, but also there are a few explosive barrels. What you can do is that you can use your uh, it's not called magnesis, uh, it's called stasis. Uh, your stasis uh, rune to uh, stop the boulder, and then you can hit it a bunch of times to be able to launch it towards the enemy base camp, hit the explosive barrels, explode everything in a blaze of glory, and kill everything. Um, another great example, of course, is the classic uh, grass on fire option, where there is a section of the game where there is a lot of strong wind that is pointing in the direction of an enemy camp. Leading up to that enemy camp is a lot of dry grass. Uh, and so the player thinks to themselves, hmm, can I light this on fire and have the wind push it towards the enemy camp? And the answer is yes, uh, which is one of the most surprising things that I've seen. Um, and uh, yeah, it lights on fire, uh, the wind pushes it towards the enemy camp, there are explosive barrels in the enemy camp, they light on fire, they explode. Um, so in that sense, like, I don't want... In, in my game here, I don't want the player to press a button and have it do nothing. There should always be some kind of thing that you can do at any point. Uh, it might not be the best option. Heck, it might be a terrible option. But there's always an option to do it. Um, so, it, therefore, uh, it's, it, it's not about, you know, can I do this? It's about what should I do? Kind of like that Superman complex of like, uh, I'm going to save this game off screen, uh, just for safety reasons, of course. Uh, documents, game design. Uh, well, 3D action game. And I still don't have a title for it, so I'm also going to call this 3D Action Game uh, 
animation list. But yeah, so like, uh, yeah, I, I never want the player to press a button and have it do nothing. So with that being said, uh, the launching punch where we've got forwards and upwards and I'm not going to bother with going left and right uh, because uh, if you do try to do left or right it's just going to register as neutral and he'll just punch forwards. May Actually, okay, what, what you could do with that then is that you could angle the forwards punch. Um, so, and this isn't going to be like a particular animation. If anything, uh, it'll just like, he'll slightly rotate as he does it or something. Um, or something. I don't really know. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I'm just going to put a note in here. Can be angled left and right. That way you can kind of target it a bit. Um, you could even say that like uh, you can angle it up just a little bit if you pull back just a little bit, um, then you can kind of, like, what I'm thinking is that maybe when you do the launching punch or whatever, there's a reticle that'll appear on screen. Uh, and then when it finally releases, wherever you are pointing towards, that's the direction that the enemy will fly. There probably won't actually be a reticle, but I am assuming that whenever you do it, uh, the camera will kind of go on their shoulder, and then you can kind of maneuver around to angle it. But, um, well, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll mess with it as we go along. So anyway, uh, we got the launching punch, uh, and then we got the kick. Um, you know what, I'll just call this KK. Uh, so what does the kick do? Um, well, let's see, uh, there's a couple of things, so, okay, here's what I'm thinking, um, we, we have, uh, but we'll do the normal like uh, forwards and stuff. And in this case, I do think that the kick would make sense to go side to side. So I'm also going to do left, right. Um, the kick, however, does not go backwards. Uh, but what would it do if you input it back? Um, oh, my creative muscles are hurting right now. I'm having to think so much. Um, Let's see, we could have it so that he gets kicked backwards somehow, but I'm not exactly sure how that would work. Uh, not to mention on larger enemies that might not work the best. Um, then again, doing anything on larger enemies wouldn't be the best. Uh, could... Uh, We already uh, we can't do a kick forwards because we already got a kick forwards. Uh, what we need is something special, something different. Um, we could do a similar thing to the uppercut, except it's kicking upwards. Um, in that way, we could have it so that it's yeah, uh, it, it would like launch up but not as far. So yeah, I'm gonna say upwards. Um, and the, and the cool thing about the kick is that with the punch, they would probably land on their feet if you uppercut them. Um, but with the kick, they wouldn't. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. Um, no, launching punch should always make them prone anyway. Uh, yeah, it'll probably go upwards anyway. Yeah, so on the ground, if you ever input the kick, uh, 
if you go forwards, he'll be grounded. Like, okay, it, it's... In, in this case, the kick is something that, like... It's like a launching punch, but not as far. And also more directional. So... Uh, but then what's the point? Uh, uh, gotta think, gotta think, gotta think, gotta think, gotta think, gotta think... Maybe there's something different about it. Maybe there's something unique about it. Maybe we have some kind of power associated with it. So that there's like, I don't know, it would do more damage or something, but then that wouldn't make sense. But then maybe you could do a charge up and release kind of thing. That wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? Um, yeah, and like you could punch with your punches and then be able to release with your kicks and all that. And then it would explode in a lot of damage and maybe a lot of money back as well, depending on how much it did. Yeah, that could be an interesting idea. Um, single punch kick thing though so then okay yeah that's it then. Uh, yeah okay uh so i think i know what i want to do with the kick before it was just going to be like some special stuff but i think i think i figured it out maybe um this could change in the future obviously but here's my thinking and i'm going to put this um actually i think i have a different document that i can work with uh maybe what's this what's this oh yeah this is um yeah i remember making all this Yeah, here was the original stuff. Oh, what did I write down for kick? Um, let's see. Oh, hey, look at that. I had the dash button already in here. And then I had an energy blast question mark. Um, eh. I, I mean, having a projectile, I don't like projectiles. I mean, they're fine. And like, so, sometimes I wish in some games there were project projectiles just so I could like deal with enemies I don't want to deal with. <laughs> um, I don't know though. It'd be some kind of like Hadouken esque thing, but. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. This one doesn't give me much of a any ideas, so I'm just going to put it in here. Um, put it in here. Okay, so the cool thing about the kick that I've kind of theorized. Um, the, the kick has, uh, what would I call it? Um, kick has a special function for, for every attack that you make, um, your special, boots or feet or whatever maybe it's you or whatever um i'll just say your special increases or your special power increases black panther style or something like that no well okay uh for every attack that you make and every attack you receive your receive your special power increases whenever you kick that power releases all at once so yeah so the idea here 
is that as you're doing damage to people and whatnot, um, you're slowly storing energy. And that energy can be expelled whenever you do a kick with your feet. Um, and in this sense, uh, I don't think going left and right would work very well. Uh, I mean, you could do it. It's very easy to do kind of like a roundhouse kick and kick them sideways, but I'm going to take it out for now. Um, and just have the forwards and upwards very much like the launching punch. Um, and the idea is the launching punch can launch them, and it can launch them pretty dang far and up. However, if you store up power for a long time with the special kick and then release it on somebody, they will go flying. <laughs> they will be uh, wrought into oblivion. <laughs> Um, yeah. And this is probably also how you take out, like, special bigger enemies. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, there's a lot of things that we can do with this, actually. Um, hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, first off, there's something I'm going to take out. Uh... Hmm. Uh, I still want to be able to jump off the opponent to launch them forwards. Or rather, to kick off the opponent to go back for me to go backwards and for them to go forwards. Um... Yeah, I, I, can, I can still do that. Okay, so my original thinking was that in order to actually jump off the opponent and have myself go forwards and then go back, I would actually also input the kick button, but I think I'm not going to do that now. Um, and instead, uh, there are going to be combination buttons, but they'll do different things. Oh uh, gosh, my mind is racing. Okay, uh... So we've got the, the special the special kick release, and I'm going to call this like SPK launch, so to speak. Um, and you can do that either forwards or upwards. different if they did it right off the bat. Like, it wouldn't do much damage or whatever, so it would just be the equivalent of a damaging punch then? I mean, probably, but like... Hmm. Um, let me check something real quick. Cool. Um... Um, goodness. Okay, so we've got all this. Uh, special kick does that. Uh, probably can't go left or right. Uh... Excuse me. Goodness. I need, like, some, some better music. I'll have you guys still listen to this, uh, but how do I, oh, right, right, sound mixer options, wait, so, oh, that's right, that's right. more to my own stuff. 
Uh, just because I need a bit more. Uh, uns, uns, uns. Okay. So we need. Okay. What 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 is next? What is next? Let's just go forwards. Um, I think that's all of the grounded stuff. There is uh, the jumping off thing, uh, but that's you know movement based again. So I think I already covered that. Uh, we could do some of the combo buttons, um, which in this case, uh, special kick and launching punch would put the energy into the punch. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, if we did the kick, then that, but we already got that covered. So do we not have combo buttons? I mean, that's fine actually. Um, okay, yeah. In that case, I think that's all of the grounded stuff really, which is weird. Um, but it, yeah. I should also note, actually, uh, the forwards kick is going to have a different angle. So, like, the launching punch can be angled left or right. The special kick, well, okay, it, it's, it still can, but it's going to be angled downwards no matter what you do. Uh, unless you, you know, angle it upwards. So, like, instead of launching somebody into a wall, you're always going to be launching them into the floor. Um, into floor can be angled left and right. Okay. Um, and, and that's just because I love the fantasy of just nailing somebody into the ground and having them their body be drug over like through the ground and leave like a meteor uh uh like, like a meteor trail so to speak um a lot of stuff that you see in dragon ball and stuff but it's so heckin cool ah heck <laughs> Okay, uh, what do we have next? Um, I think that's all the grounded stuff. So, now we're going to be in the air. Um, and in the air, uh, and being in the air is very similar to being on the ground in a sense, because uh, you do have the damaging punch times four again, uh, which is, you know, as normal. The only difference is that um, I'm not gonna say you can only do it once, but, uh, well, hmm. okay, what's the punishment for that? Uh, if you do the full combo more than one time, we could either have it so that he slowly drifts down to the ground or just is starting to drop down to the ground, um, or it does less damage, or you just can't do it, which is a no. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say that every punch that you do does keep you up in the air a little longer, but the power of doing that gets less and less. Um, also, I don't know why that's going like that. Okay. Okay, there we go. It should now. There we go. Okay. Sorry, it, uh, the thing was appearing. Oh, it still. Hmm. Wait, so if I do it on this screen, then will it appear on this screen? No, it'll still. Why? Get off of there. Oh, well. There's not much I can do about that. Uh, so I guess you guys will be, uh, seeing what I'm listening to. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so we also have the launching punch as always, except this time, instead of forwards and upwards, it's going to be 
forwards and downwards. Because, uh, yeah, I don't want to be able to just infinitely go up because that's kind of ridiculous. Um, oh, man, that would be really cool, but I'm not implementing a grab. I just thought of the idea of, like, you're in the air with somebody, and then you grab them and just throw them from, like, 100 feet. <laughs> and they just crash into the ground. Uh, that, that'd be really cool, but I'm not doing a grab, so I'm gonna have to say no to that. You'll get a similar effect, though, from other things, so it's fine. Oh man, there's a lot of things you can do with a grab, too. I'm just imagining you doing, like, a Mario tornado grab or whatever, where you grab them and then you start spinning around, and you just start knocking everybody in sight, uh, before throwing them. Gosh, that'd be fun. Um... But that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be without it for now. <laughs> uh, okay. For, okay. Forwards, downwards, and forwards, of course, can be angled. Um, I'm going to take off the left and right bit because I know what I mean. Okay. Launching punch forwards can be angled and downwards. Uh, and then, of course, we have the good old SPK Lounge. Louch. Uh, and once again, this is very similar to the launching punch. Um, forwards can be angled. How did I? Oh, four of words. Um, can be angled and downwards. the button that I didn't mean to press um, and it kind of messed things up a bit. <laughs> special about the SPK launch um, well actually I don't know if he should be able to kick forwards in the air um, well, I don't see why not but hmm. yeah yeah he can be launched forwards uh, if anything it can't be angled Falls. Um, eh, I'll leave it as can't be angled for now. Okay, uh, so what else can you do in the air? Uh, well, there's the movement stuff where you can kick off and jump off. Although jumping off would probably launch him downwards, so I'm thinking about it. Um, right, uh, I forgot about dashing in both of these. Uh, well, I mean, dashing's a movement thing, so... Yeah, targeted air dash, that's always going to be a thing. Um, I'll just put uh, a note here saying, uh, can be acted out of. And for that matter, um, I'm going to, from the air, and, and the ground really, but... Uh, OOD for out of dash, launching punch, and OOD SPK. And yeah, 
I'm just gonna call it uh, SPK for special kick. Uh, also, I like the I like the idea of calling it SPK. It just sounds nice. Um, okay. Oops. Wrong button. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Out of dash. Uh, well, actually, um, we don't need to do that because the dash will always put you in the air. Yeah, the dash will always put you in the air, so attacking out of the dash will always be attacking out of the air, meaning it'll always be an out of dash launching punch and an out of dash special kick. Okay, that's fine. And yeah, so my idea with this, uh, and kind of the idea I had in my head, it was uh, two, two things really. Uh, the, the first one being when you slam an opponent into the ground, uh, you should be able to follow that up by dashing towards them while they're in the ground and just slamming them further into the ground with another huge punch. Uh, from there, uh, you can also do this kick, but also uh, if you launch them forwards into a wall or something, you can then follow up by dashing towards them and then just punching them like through the wall or something. <laughs> something ridiculous like that. Um, yeah, something like that. So, yeah. Okay. Is there anything else? I mean, we need blocking. Um, so I'll just call this defense and uh, block, block hit. Uh, ooh, a parry would be interesting. <laughs> uh, Oh, man, I'm just thinking, like, if you like you know, either release your block at the right time or do your block at the right time, then, uh, or, like, attack out of your block at the right time or something, something unique, uh, then, like, your opponent is staggered for a minute, uh, and you can just follow up with whatever. That could be cool. going to have a parry right now exactly, but hmm, eh, well, yeah, yeah. there needs to be some kind of offensive option as you're blocking, or not have block at all. Oh, there also needs to be things out of dodging, now that I think about it. stuff out of dodge is fine, but doing stuff out of block is also fine. Um, I mean, I could do a parry and just have, like, the next whatever be a little more powerful or something. That could be neat. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put a parry in. Um, and uh, I'll say that... Uh, the parry and like how you do it is going to be determined by um, and I'll just write this down uh, activated by hitting uh, by hitting an attack while walking so I kind of like I kind of like that idea of uh, that being what a parry is because it kind of makes sense. Like if you are parrying something, you are going on the offensive. Um, and so in all, also, well, it doesn't really matter what button you press as long as it's a, an attack button. Um, but the idea with a parry is that like you are in the defensive position and then you do something aggressive to you know make yourself more vulnerable. Um, 
but by doing so, and if you do it correctly, you're actually leaving the opponent vulnerable, more vulnerable than you, and you're able to follow up with a more powerful attack. So with that being said, I'll, I'll leave the parry in, and you activate it by hitting that attack button while blocking. And I'll specify attack button then while blocking. Um, That's probably the only combination button there is. Um, obviously, you can block and dodge. Um, yeah. Wait, what's the block button? Wait, do I have a block button? Yes, I do. Uh, LMR. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. We can add things to this as we go along in the, if necessary, but for now, that's really all we need. I can't really think of anything else. Uh, so I'm going to save this for now. Uh, and we do have a long list of stuff to do, although this middle part is just explaining stuff. Um, but I mean, like in total, we have, you know, walking forwards, back, and left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 animations. And th that's also not including like the idol uh, animation, uh, the damaged animation, um, possibly a taunt or something, and maybe one other miscellaneous thing like a, an idol animation that randomly activates every now and again. So more or less in total, we have to make about 40 different animations. Oh boy. Oh, this is what I've done to myself, ain't it? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine, actually. Um, I mean, let's put it like this. Let's say... Uh, let's say on average, uh, an animation takes one and a half days to do. In other words, I'm able to get about three animations done uh, or sorry, two animations done every three days. Uh, that kind of also goes out to about, uh, that kind of also goes out to about two, let's see, how, how many a week? Uh, three and a half a week, I'd say, almost four. So that'd be seven every two weeks, which would be 14 a month, which would then be, uh, 30 every two months, almost. Oh, okay, technically 28 every two months. And so, three months, yeah. So, okay, so the idea is then, if I wanna make all these animations and average at about one and a half per day, um, one and a half per day, wait, what? Is that right? No, 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 uh, if it's two every three days, then it's one every one and a half days, right? On average. Um, if I'm gonna average that, then I would be able to get most, if not all of these animations done uh, by, let's see, January, February, March, April? Yeah. I get this done at about mid-April, all the animations, and that's only if I only work on the animations. If I don't only work on the animations, and I actually like work in Unity and stuff, um, sorry, I just checked something. Um, if I don't only work in animating, but I also work in like working in Unity a bit here and there, which I probably will. Um, 
then I would say take about six months to do to implement everything. Uh, we'll also do some other stuff in the meantime there, including like animating enemies and whatnot. Because the enemies will probably just be uh, different, like a different coloration of the main character and have very similar animations to the main character, if a little slower. Um, yeah. Okay. I definitely think that I can finish this game within the year. Uh, as long as I, you know, stay consistent about it and keep on working at it constantly. I could probably get this done by the end of the year. And, and again, this isn't supposed to be like a fully fledged game that's going to be released on Steam or whatever. Uh, this is a game that is going straight into my portfolio and is only going to be used for my portfolio. Uh, and in that sense, uh, I, I will release it to the public, obviously, because I want you guys to be able to play the stuff I make. However, um, it's more important for me to have a good portfolio right now than to actually release something good. So, yeah, I'm just going to do that, do that, and then hopefully from there I can actually get a job and whatnot. So, um, find some place in the industry. Um, yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh... All right, well, kind of uh, put off working on uh, jump animation 